Hello, my name is Rain, and I've decided to make a Reaction Mechanisms Basics video. I realized that there wasn't any basic videos that really showed how to do it from the start, so if someone wanted to teach themselves or wanted consolidation on something they just learnt, then I think this is a good video for them. So basically, I'll try and be as neat as possible when I'm writing on the screen. Forgive me if I'm a bit messy, I'll just show what the arrows mean, what electro files and nuclear files are and the examples of alkenes because they're the most basics. Okay, so let's start from the very basics. We have two molecules. This is just a little demonstration of what the arrows mean. We have A and B which could be hydrogen and chloride or anything sort of that just forms a single covalent bond. This is just an example of that. So we have A and B. And so these two are formed, two electrons shared between them to form a single bond. Okay, so if we wanted to say that one electron moved, one electron's moving to this, we do a single headed arrow, which basically means one electron is moving in the direction of the arrow. The arrow shows to the flow of electrons where two headed arrow is two electrons and one is a single atom moving. I mean, single electron moving. Basically, this here will form the single electrons to each. So if I say this one here did the same, then it would be the same for A and B. But if it was a double-headed arrow, so this is now a double-headed arrow, then what's happening is this is to moving both of these electrons. Both of them are moving to this atom and only one, I mean, none, uh, none are moving to this A atom here. So now we have two here, which originally it only had one, which it bonded, and now it has two. So this becomes an A negative charge because it's gained one electron. So it's a negative charge. Remember that negative charge means it's gained one electron. And this used to have just one, has lost an electron, which is a positive charge. So it's the opposite to what people sort of think. That positive means it's gained. No, it's positive, has lost an electron. So this is the basics of a, a sort of split up of electrons, two different atoms. But now if we want to look at these, and if these were forming to one another, then we would know that this here is electron rich. So this is electron rich here. And this of course is electron poor here. And so this, because it's gained more electrons, it's electron rich, which is pretty much the defini definition of a nuclear file. Which nuclear file? I hope that's how you spell it. Oops. Nuclear file. Oh, doesn't matter, it's a bit overlapping, but nuclear file means electron rich and electron poor is it electrophile meaning it's electropore. And in reactions, what always happens is electron rich moves to electron poor. So this moves to donate its electrons or one electron to share between these two, moving from an electrophile which attacks this to form a bond. So we'll see that in a minute um, when I go through more examples of actual reactions, but this just nucleophile just know it's electron rich and it attacks electron poor atoms to form a bond between them. Okay, so let's look at a 
alkene. We'll look at a very basic alkene. We'll look at ethene, which I'm not going to draw the hydrogen, so but it has two, like this. Let's say this is reacting with hydrogen bromide. These two are reacting. So, from what we know here, this bond has more electrons. It's electron rich. So, this here, this bond here, is a nucleophile. It's going to donate electrons to this here, which is a electrophile, because it always moves from a nucleophile to electrophile. So how we represent this with a red color, this one, electrons move to this here, this electrophile, this breaks and moves to the electrophile which is an addition reaction because it's adding a molecule to a double bond to form a single product. And now, if this is going to react with this hydrogen, what happens to this Br here is this bond breaks, so these electrons will move, as seen here, to the bromide. So these both move because there's two and this bond breaks and forms what is seen here next. This first step, which is a carbocation, which is basically the intermediate, carbocation or intermediate reaction, where this C here has broken its bonds, double bond here, to form a bond with hydrogen. So this here, this moves and breaks open to form a bond with hydrogen. So now there's three hydrogens here. And there's still two here. But there wasn't another hydrogen here. And since, because of the octet rule, this needs to have eight around the carbon. Two, four, six, eight. Eight or two, four, six, eight. This is eight. This is six because it's lost a bond. So as I said here, if it has lost electrons, that means it becomes negative. I mean, positively charged here. And this bromine, which both these electrons went to, so it has two electrons, has gained an electron, so it's pos it's negative, sorry. This is the carbocation. And what happens is, since we know that a nucleophile attacks an electrophile, electron rich, this has extra electrons, this has little electrons, it is electron poor, these electrons will move directly to this and form the covalent bond between the carbon and bromide as this donates electrons and this receives to form a bond. So this nucleophile is donating electrons to the electrophile to form the bond, basically. And so this forms the final product, which here well, in black is probably better, which is basically the ethene turns into the bromoethane. This bond is formed and there are no charges because all are here. So usually the reactions are told that this bond breaks forms this, but this carbocation forms as there is this happening. So that's quite basic.